Hi, this is Bo Sanchez and welcome to Kerygma TV. We're starting a brand new series today. It is titled Open Wide. Why open wide? Because we want to open the doors of the church, not only so that people can come in, but so that we can go out, go out into the world. How do you like that? We're going to talk about how to follow Francis, follow Jesus, follow Pope Francis. Francis. Pope Francis is doing such a wonderful thing in our lives, in the church, and in our faith. He's not changing doctrines. What he's doing is he's expressing them in such a fresh and powerful way. It's changing lives. And I pray that this day, this episode, this program will change your life. Be very blessed. Father, we follow your presence wherever it is not just here at the feast when we leave when we're at home when we go to the office when we go to the movies we want your presence to be with us always we want to always be in your presence because there's nothing like your life changing presence and we believe that as we have sought you here today we will be different when we walk out of this place one step closer to our dreams in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name how many first timers do we have first timers raise your hand welcome 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 the two of you welcome sister welcome let's all shout welcome to our first timers say welcome first timers we love you we're so happy that you're here uh, we have a gift for you outside and a short message all right make sure now if you want to continue to be part of our family we'll welcome you every week grow with us serve with us and bring your friends over to the feast amen we want to greet everyone watching on TV and on the internet God bless you thank you for tuning in we pray you would receive his word wherever you are are you ready for his word our series today kicks off all right open wide everybody say open wide if you notice keep this on the screen all right if you notice um, there are two doors you see them all right and Pope Francis how many of you love Pope Francis all right give Pope Francis a hand all right I mean Pope Francis is shaking things up you know he's He's just doing fresh and new things. And I love this image of the door because, you know, we can't fit everyone in PICC, right? Yes, we can. I used to think that I needed to bring all my friends to the prayer meeting. And if I didn't get to bring them to the Life in the Spirit seminar once a year, I would say I have to wait for the following year. Because for me, evangelization is bringing them into the room. Pope Francis is saying, let's not keep Jesus in the church. Follow me out of the church. Let's go out of the church where the people are poor, sick, dying, hungry, broken. Yes? And if we follow Francis out the church, he doesn't say everybody come in. He says, follow me out and when we follow Francis we follow Jesus amen tell someone beside you follow Francis follow Jesus and hey if you follow Francis and you follow Jesus when the people around you follow you they'll be following Jesus amen Pope Francis, read this, all right? Pope Francis isn't changing doctrines. He's not changing the teachings of the church, but actually he's changing how these doctrines are expressed and lived out today. The world is changing. The world is updating. The world is moving forward. God is calling us to also do a new thing, to say timeless truths in new and fresh ways. That's why I love what we do at the feast. We love to make it alive and fresh and creative. Amen? Because we want word, we want the word of God to always be palatable, to always be fresh and attractive to people because we want to share his love to everyone on this planet. 
And if you're ready to do that with us, let's, let's seal this gathering with our declaration of abundance, all right? Um, b- before that, can you just stretch your arms out wide like this and face someone, face someone, face one person and repeat this after me. Repeat this after me. Say, this... Wait, you got to look at someone. You got to look that person in the eye. Don't look at me. Say to that person, this is how much God loves you. Embrace that person, right? Stretch your arms out wide. As we come before him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, say, Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word so I become more like Jesus every day. Shout it. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Let's read from Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Read it with me all together. He saved us. Not because of righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. One more time. He saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. I have a classmate in in, in high school. He was my classmate in high school. And on my first day of class, I met him. And then people were calling him by a different name. Okay? I met him and he said his name was Robbie. But then I noticed that people didn't call him Robbie. You know what they called him? They called him Pupu. Seriously, yes, I said Pupu on stage. Okay, so you remember. They would call him Pupu, Pupu. And I said, why do you call him Pupu? And then I found out that in grade one, grade one, he made Pupu in his pants. And so he was walking around class and people could see a stain of Pupu on his bottom. And for seven years after that, they kept calling him Pupu. There is something about us. We equate the sinner with the sin. Are you following me? Sometimes, when people sin, we equate the sinner with the sin. I lived like that for many years. I, I kept falling into the sin of pornography. And because of that, I started to call myself with a new identity that I am a bad person. I am a lustful person. I am a, an addict to sexual images. And That is why I could not break free from it because it became my identity. But many of us don't realize that we are actually good people who do bad things. Can I say that again? You're a good person who does bad things. That is why the Bible says He saves us. Not because of our good works, but because of His mercy. And the reason why God has mercy on you is because in the first place, you are a good person. But while being a good person, sometimes you choose to do wrong, and then you go off the path of a good person. So here comes God, and He saves you. He embraces you and brings you back to the path where you belong. Because even if you fall into sin, it does not change the fact that you are good inside. You are a sinner, yes? I am a sinner, yes? 
but we are not our sin. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't want a single person in this room to continue living the way I lived, torturing myself, looking down on myself, and beating myself up, thinking that I'm hopeless. You are not hopeless because you are good. And that is why God embraces us in our sin. Pope Francis has three great loves. The love for the sinner, the love for the poor, and the love for the earth. Right? Today, we're talking about the love for the sinner. That's why talk one is embrace. Say embrace. God's love embraces us even while we sin. Now, let me just get something straight, all right? Sin is not okay. Can you tell someone beside you? Sin is not okay. Sometimes we think that because the feast is all happy, happy, and we're just about, you know, dreams and all of this, that it's okay to sin. I'm a servant, so I can sin because God forgives. I'm a regular attendee, so I can sin and do whatever I want because God forgives. Hey, be careful. God hates the sin and He loves the sinner. But He hates the sin because sin is bad. Sin is wrong. Sin is not okay. But we don't condemn the sinner. But this is what we do. If you really receive the love of God, even if you're in sin, God will love you unconditionally wherever you are. God loves you as you are, where you are. He doesn't ask you to change. But when you accept His love, that love will change you. Amen? God loves you just as you are, but He loves you too much to let you remain the same. We love you, but we're not going to change you. It's not our job to change you. It's our job to love you. But we pray that as you receive the love of God, and really let it settle in your heart that love will overpower the sin in you and set you free so that you will also be free to love others unconditionally. Amen? Tell someone beside you, let's hate the sin, but embrace the sinner. Can you embrace a few sinners around you? Come on, embrace the sinner around you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Put your hand over your chest and say, Father, thank you for loving me unconditionally. I accept your love today. May it change me from the inside out so that I can also love others unconditionally in Jesus name Amen Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path all those who love God make some noise come on come on The title of my talk is Embrace. Everybody say embrace. embrace. And my big message to you is this. I want you to high five two or three people around you and say, join the party. Join the party. Join the party. Join the party, everybody. You have a choice. God is throwing a party of mercy and you can either stand outside or you can join in. Everybody say that again. Join the party. Join the party. Here's a fact. You and I are on a spiritual journey, and we need to keep on growing. I want you to tell somebody beside you, keep on growing. Don't get stuck somewhere in your spiritual growth. You've got to keep on, keep on, keep on. When I was in grade three, I had a classmate of mine. His name was Carlos. He was our class bully. He was not big. We were of the same height. But he was meaner and louder, and so he was the bully. When we left grade three, I never saw him again, never. Until 15 years later, I was in a store and I hear someone call my name, Bo Sanchez. 
And I turned around and could not find who was calling my name. I heard it again, Bo Sanchez, look down. I looked down and there he was. <laughs> I'm exaggerating. I mean, I mean, I saw, and then Carlos said, you remember me, Carlos? I'm your class bully. And, and I, was, I, was, I, was, I was asking myself, uh, you know, I, I wanted to say, why, why is the bully bullied? <laughs> it's like, you know, grade three, we were like that. And then when, when we grew, I, 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 grew, I grew taller and, and he stayed that way. <laughs> and, and I said, why are you so vertically challenged? And, and so we were laughing and laughing. And, and here's the thing. I, I want to say this to all of you. There is nothing wrong if you get stuck in your physical growth. I mean, look at human history. A lot of short people doing great and magnificent, magnificent things. Yes or no? If, if there's a vertically challenged person beside you, just say, there's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> you're, you're, you're okay. You're, you're. But, but I have something to tell you. Ask me what? There's something wrong if you get stuck in your spiritual growth. There's something wrong. Ask me why? Because your spirit is your essence. That's your core. That's who you are. One day your outer shell will die and your spirit will endure. I want you to grab somebody's arm and, and, and grip it hard and tell that person, Mama matay ka rin. <laughs> Oh yeah, you're gonna die one day. And, and you know what? Your spirit, your, you, your spirit has to keep on growing. If it gets stuck in your spirit, well, growth is, it's a serious matter. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna share with you the three stages of, this, of, of your spiritual journey. How many stages? There are three. And, and, the, and each stage is represented by the three characters in the story of the prodigal son. Yes. Stage one, surprised son. Stage two, better brother. The older brother of the younger brother. And then stage three, the forgiving father. These are the three stages of the spiritual growth. And I'm going to share with you one by one what they are. Are you ready? Yeah. Everybody say, I'm ready. Everybody say, I'm ready to learn. The story, amazing, classic, age-old, mag magnificent, fantastic story that Jesus said, told us, one father, two sons, younger son says, give me half of, your, of my inheritance, runs away from home, worships the God of pleasure, becomes a party goer, the Bible says, endless parties and prostitutes, spends all his money, becomes dirt poor, takes care of pigs, eats the food of pigs, hungry, gets so hungry, he says, I'll just go back to, to dad, ask for his forgiveness. I, I won't say accept me as a son. I don't think he will. L listen to this. I don't think he will accept me as a son, but I'll ask him to accept me as one of his hired workers. Are you listening to what I'm saying? That was his expectation, that the father will accept him as a servant. So he walks home. And while walking home, guess what? The father was always looking out for him, waiting for him. And the father sees the son. And what he does when he saw the son, he starts running 100 meter dash, grabs the son, embraces the son, puts a robe around his shoulder, puts sandals, put a ring on his finger. And then he says, let's party. My son has come home. And, and I bet the son was so surprised, so shocked that he was being accepted as a son again. My dear friends, Stage one of the spiritual journey is the surprised son. You experienced that. I experienced that. Maybe the first time you came at the feast, you were touched by God. And, and little by little, your faith started to grow. Maybe you attended a retreat. Maybe you read a spiritual book. Maybe you listened to a talk, a spiritual talk on TV, and something changed in your heart. You started realizing that God was real. God was alive. God was close. Do you recall that time? Do you recall that time in, in your spiritual journey? Stage one, the surprised son. You are dumbfounded, overwhelmed by the idea that the God of the universe thinks about you, loves you, cares for you. Do I hear a loud amen? amen. Stage one, marked by joy, marked by wonder that God is so close and it's so beautiful. I remember I was 12 years old. I attended my very first Catholic prayer meeting. And every week I would go and I, I, I would just say, wow, I can talk to God like this? You know, sure, I was a Catholic before and, 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 and you know, but, but yeah, I kind of like knew God, but 
he was distant. Now he was so close. And then the mass became alive and, and, and so many beautiful things happened. So, so I remember 13 years old, God was, was just, this is what happens when you're in stage one. You, you get high, not on drugs, but on God. And, and I remember I announced to my mom as a 13-year-old kid, Mom, I'm not going to school anymore because Jesus is coming again. And, and, and what will I do with my college education? Nothing. You know, I'm going to go in the streets and win more souls for Jesus. And my mother said, you're just avoiding your homework. <laughs> and I said, that's true. But I also want to win souls for Jesus. You know? So there I was. That's, that's stage one. But in every stage, I want you to listen to me. Everybody say, I'm listening. Very important. In every stage, stage one, stage two, stage three, there are always inherent dangers in them. Everybody say dangers. And in stage one, the danger is, everybody say this with me, backsliding. You're attending the feast. You love the feast. You love God. Wow, it's so good to be reading the Bible. It's so good to be, to be praying. You know, God is here in my life, you know. And, and, then, and then the danger is after a while, after a few months, after a year, you know, the, the call of the old life comes back. And, and then you, you backslide, you turn away, and then you stop attending, and you, know, you, you, you begin to prioritize other things. Are, are you listening to me? Yeah. This is the danger of stage one. But if you push on and push on, guess what? You move into stage two, a stage of beautiful growth. Everybody say stage two. The better brother. The better brother when you become more faithful. You know, the older brother was a faithful guy. Yes or no? He was faithful. The younger son, I mean, whoa, he got all the money that he could and wasted it on parties. No, the, 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 the older brother was faithful. He was a worker and, and, he, and he was obedient. And, and, and so that's what you want to do. You want to become an obedient son and you, of God and, 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 and you want to be faithful. You start, you start regularly going to church and regularly reading and the Bible and regularly praying. And you, you get to clean up your act. And it feels good. It's a beautiful stage of growth. But, as I told you, every stage has its inherent, what? Dangers. And in stage two, the dangerous rigidity, self-righteousness, and being judgmental. Are you with me in this? It's a natural thing because you're getting better and better and better in your spiritual life. You begin to look down at other people. I remember when I started growing and growing closer to God, what happened was, well, <laughs> what happened was, uh, I'm going to I'm going to read you the text. Can I read you the text? I'll, I'll read you the exact text of what happened with the younger, what younger, uh, older brother. So the party is going on, right? This youngest son was already welcome. Here's what happens. Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. Told you, very faithful, very dutiful. When he returned home, he heard dance music. Everybody say dance music. He heard dance music coming from the house, and he asked one of the servants what was going on. Your brother is back, he was told, and your father had killed a calf. We were fattening and has prepared a great feast. Everybody say feast. To celebrate his coming home again unharmed. The older buddy. What, what happened to the older brother? He was angry and he wouldn't go in everybody say he wouldn't go in there was a party going on and he wouldn't go in why his father came out begged him but he replied all these years i've worked hard for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to and in all that time you never gave me even one young goat one little bear <laughs> not, not one not one to feast with my friends. Yet when the son of yours, that bastard, terrible, horrible son of yours, comes back after spending your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the finest, best prize. Ah, <sighs> calf. Hello. Wag you beef. <laughs> Me? Not even one. Meh. <laughs> Now, here's the thing. That's the danger of stage two. The danger of stage two, you're getting faithful, you're getting more obedient, you're, you're shaping up your life, fixing it all, and, and, and you, you're there serving God, you know, and then you look down at other people. Why, why are they not faithful like me? 
You got me? Why are they not faithful like me? The, 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 the older brother was saying, I'm faithful to you, and, and, and you're now accepting this other guy who's not faithful to you into the same house. Hello! How can I live with someone who is not faithful? You know, they, and, and many Christians are like that. Sometimes they want their little church group to be a little church group where everybody is good and kind and their standards are like this. And if you don't meet your standard, poof, get out. You know, get out. You're, you don't belong to my little church group. I, I want you to know that's not, that's not what God wants. Because the Pope, Fran Pope Francis says the church is a field hospital for the broken and the wounded of society. Do I hear a loud amen? You know, we're, we're, the church is not an army of the strong. It's a hospital for the weak and the, and, and the, and the wounded. And it's, it's just blows your mind. When you, anyway, I remember when I was uh, growing up as a teenager in the Lord, you know, and serving God, I started reading a lot of Bible. I, and, and here's what happens. Because I read a lot of Bible, I looked down at everyone who was not reading their Bibles. <laughs> I remember my friends and I in the prayer meeting, we would talk Bible to one another. You know what I mean? No, you don't. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. My friend asks me, how are you, Bo? And I will answer, I'm fine because God so loved the world that he gave us his only son so that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. How about you? And my friend will say, oh, I'm fine because this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You know, we, we love talking Bible. And then we overhear other people say, hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And we say, ha, worldly. You know? Because I fasted once a week, I looked down at everyone that did not fast once a week. You know, if I, I gave up. TV for God. And so I looked down at everyone that did not, that was, you know, still watching TV. I gave up my girlfriend for God, you know? And so I, I, I looked down at everyone that did not do, and they still have a girlfriend in their arm, you know? Uh, that, that girlfriend is, is not my wife, by the way, okay? My, my, and my wife said, praise God, you know, praise God. You know? Hallelujah. It's good to give that up. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I want you to you, th that's the danger of stage two. When, when, you, when you become rigid, because this is the way you should follow God. Because this is how I do it. And so this is how you should do it too. You know? Oh, you're not doing it my way. I'm sorry. You're not. You know? I, I would look down at everyone um, be, who was not doing what I was doing. Are you listening to what I'm saying? This is the temptation. Rigidity, self-righteousness, being judgmental of other people. And, and it's crazy. And... I, I, I want you to know how, how funny this is because you, you find this everywhere. I was, I was walking in a mall one time and somebody comes up to me and says, are you Brother Bo? And I said, yes, I am. He said, Brother Bo, repent because you worship Mary. Huh? <laughs> Brother Bo, all Catholics will go to hell. They will? And then they, he opened the Bible and just gave me one verse after another verse telling me about that. And after lambasting and insulting my faith and my practices and my religion, you know, you know what he does? He says, Brother Bo, before I go, can we have a selfie? <laughs> and I said, are you sure? I'm going to hell. <laughs> okay, you know, so. I didn't argue, I didn't debate. You know what? I re long realized you, you can't win, win people like that just by debate. You know, we, don't have, we didn't have the time. But I found him to be very sincere, by the way. He didn't mean me anything wrong. He, he really was concerned that I was going to go to hell. He was very sincere. But do you know who else is sincere? Ask me who. Terrorists. Terrorists are very sincere when they shoot people. Terrorists are very sincere when they blow up buildings and kill People are very sincere. Sincerity is not a sign that you're right. You can be sincerely wrong. But here's my point. I want to share this with you. You know, you know why people in stage two sometimes think that, woo, I'm right. All of you are wrong. You know why they think that way? Because they think that they've already put God in a bottle. They put God in a box. They've already, they, I understand God completely. That's the most foolish thing you can ever say. God is eternal, you're not. God is infinite, you're not. And you can never ever in your puny mind understand who God is. Are you listening to me? You know what you and I will be doing in heaven? Ask me what. You know, people think that heaven is boring. 
you, you, you have no idea. In the kingdom of God, in heaven, every single day, you will be discovering a new facet of God, a new angle of God, a new dimension of God, because God is eternal and infinite. You will be in heaven a billion years, a trillion years, a zillion years in heaven. You and I would barely scratch who God is, his character, his magnificence, his glory, his beauty. It is an endless growth. I'm telling you, it is beautiful. And, and so it is foolish to say, I understand God already. All of you are wrong. This is, this is what I believe is right. This is crazy, absolutely. I remember this story of these four blind men, blind men walking on the road, and they're blind. And then a huge elephant crosses their path and stops in front of them. The four blind men didn't know what it was. The first blind man holds the trunk and says, oh! Oh, OMG, OMG, it's a snake, big snake, big snake. The second blind man touches the ear and says, No, it's not. It's a fan, big fan, giant fan. And the third blind man touches the body and says, What are you two guys talking about? It's a wall. And the fourth blind man embraces one of the legs and says, You got, what drugs are you taking? It's a log, it's a log. And they started arguing, arguing, arguing. And that's how foolish it is for religious people to argue in insisting that they're right and the others are wrong because God is bigger than all of us. And our puny minds can only understand a glimpse, a fraction of who God is. Are you listening to what I'm saying? The only way for, for people in stage two to move to stage three, ask me how, the only way for you to grow is humility and that's the problem in stage two pride and the worst pride of all spiritual pride I want you to know that I'm Catholic and I believe in Jesus as the fullest revelation of who the Father is that's why I'm Christian and I will share my faith to other people don't get me wrong I love sharing Jesus to other people but I will share it with gentleness with compassion with humility and most of all with love are you listening? I will. And, and I will never insult. I will never condemn. I will never say I know better than you are because you may be able to teach me something that I don't know. Friends, you've got to be humble. But here's the thing. I want you to lean on. Lean, lean, lean more further and, and, and listen to what I'm going to say. This is very important. Everybody say, I'm listening. Humility sometimes comes from humiliation. And the only way for you to have humility sometimes comes from the humiliation of a crisis. Everybody say crisis. Stage two is when you're certain about what you believe in. And for you to be humble, you need to go to uncertainty. And when you go to uncertainty, the only way to go to uncertainty is through a crisis, a crisis of faith, a crisis of faith. How many of you ever experienced that? When you go through a tragedy in your life, a trial in your life, so heavy, so, so dark, so, so big, you know, you lost a loved one, somebody had cancer, you lost a job, a relationship did not work out and you ended up broken hearted, your heart into smithereens crushed on the floor. And then you ask, why me? Oh God, the crisis. But in the crisis, you can either turn away from God or turn to God even closer and say, even if I don't understand, I believe in you. Another form of crisis is when a leader of yours, a priest, a pastor, a preacher, falls down from grace and has a scandal and everything is shaken. Your faith is jarred and, and you begin to question what that guy taught you because of what happened in his life. Another form of crisis is when you yourself have honest questions about the faith when you read a Bible and you could not understand this verse reconciling with that verse. So many ways by which you have crisis. But the bottom line is this. From certainty, you become uncertain because you have doubts. But here's the thing. Everybody say, I'm listening. A mature faith is big enough to have doubts. Are you listening to me? A mature faith is big enough for questions. Why? Because you know you don't know. You know God is so big, you're a blind man 
holding one piece of the elephant. It's okay that you don't know, but you trust. Are you with me on that? Everybody say, I trust. That's stage three. Stage three is the forgiving father. You have a choice. When you're in front of a sinner, when you're in front of an uncle that has two wives, when, you, when, you're, when you're with an office mate that you know is living in with another guy, when you know that that, that gym mate of yours is a practicing homosexual, when, when, when you know you're in front of somebody who in your religious mind is doing something wrong, you're, you have a choice. And this is the choice, to join the party or to stand outside like the older brother with his arms crossed in front of his chest and angry and self-righteous and saying, that guy is bad. He doesn't belong inside the party. But who's outside the party? You. Your choice to be the older brother, the better brother, the bigger brother, or to be the forgiving father who sees the sinner and 100 meter dash runs to the sinner embraces the sinner puts a robe around the sinner am i speaking to somebody i love to preach i love my job this is wonderful Woo! you and i worship the forgiving father that's the this is stage three pope francis is is, is bringing us to stage three pope francis is such a humble man. The reason why he is growing spiritually is because, I don't know if you noticed, but in his speeches, he always says, I'm a sinner in need of mercy. I'm a sinner in need of mercy. Pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. That's the Pope. Because to be in the forgiving father stage, you need to always remember that you're the surprise son, stage one. Unless you remember, you will never be in stage three. There was one time, but the Pope was being interviewed. Hot topic. Pope Francis, what do you think of homosexuals? And, and probably they were expecting the Pope to say, well, that's sin and, you know, they need to... I don't know what they were expecting. But he focused on love. This is what he said. If someone is gay and he, has, he searches for the Lord and has goodwill, who am I to judge? We shouldn't marginalize people for this. They must be integrated into society. He said in another time, tell me, when God looks at a gay person, does he endorse the existence of this person with love or reject and condemn this person? We must always consider the person. Uh, you know, it, the, the Pope is not changing a doctrine. He believes, he believes that sexual relations between two people of the same gender is a sin. He believes in that. But if he meets a gay person who is you know, practicing homosexual, he, he loves that person. Even if he disagrees with his lifestyle. Are you listening to me? This is very, very different kind of thinking. It's not the bigger brother, better brother. No, it's the forgiving father running towards someone who may he have disagreements with. Never mind, I love you. You're a child of God. That's the most important thing. And let God do the changing, not me. And this is not just talk of the Pope. He actually practices this. You know, he went to the U.S. recently, called up an old friend, Yayo Grassi, actually a former student, because the Pope was teaching high school before. And he knew, the Pope knew for the longest time that his friend was a practicing homosexual. He still called him up and said, can we meet? I'm going to the States. And then listen to what the Pope said. I just want to give you a hug. And so Yayo and, and his, uh, his partner came with the Pope. And the Pope embraced them warmly. Think about that. Think about that. This is your Pope doing this. How about you? When you're in front of a sinner, when you, a person you think has made and is living a life that, that you believe is wrong, do you do this? Do you run as a forgiving father? 100 meters, dash, embrace, love. You may disagree, and, 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 and you disagree with his lifestyle. You disagree with his choices, but you still love. You still befriend. There was one day, about two, three years ago, somebody wrote me a letter, very respectful letter. Brother Bo, 
when you preach at the feast, why do I not hear you talk against abortion, against artificial contraception? There is a bill right now in Congress about this. And, 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 the, and the letter went on like that. Very, very respectful, very good letter. I answered. I said, I believe what you believe. I'm a Catholic. I stand by the beliefs of the Catholic Church. And at different times, I've spoken against abortion. Um, I, I, I believe abortion is murder. And I, I, I said, I believe you. I believe. But at the feast, I have a different mission. My assignment from God is to reach out to people who don't like the church, who feel that the church is irrelevant to their lives. I, I'm speaking to a group of people who, who feel that the church has rejected them. And so when, when this is your mission, when this is my mission, I cannot, every time I open my mouth, you know, attack and criticize. You know, I was so, 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 so surprised when the Pope was asked the same question. The, the, the interviewer asked the Pope, why don't you talk about abortion more? Like, like attack it more. Here is the Pope's answer. He said, it is not necessary to talk about these issues all the time. The church's pastoral, everybody say pastoral. That, that means reaching out. Pastoral ministry cannot be obsessed with the transmission of a disjointed multitude of doctrines to be imposed insistently. We have to find a new balance. Otherwise, even the moral edifice of the church is likely to fall like a house of cards, losing the freshness and the fragrance of the gospel. You know what? He's, he's right. Because if you talk to unchurched people, they made a survey. You know what the unchurched people are saying? Ask me what? The church is more known for what it is against rather than for what it is for. Let's change that. Let's not be a church that's known for, we're against this, we're against that, we're against this, we condemn this, we criticize this. Yuck. That's not Jesus. Jesus ate with the prostitutes and the tax collectors and the drunkards and befriended them. That's who Jesus was. We need to be known as a church that loves the sinner and embraces them. Are you with me on this? Can you move up to stage three? And the only way to do that is humility. To say, I'm a sinner, I need mercy. And if you can say that, I'm a sinner, then you will look at other sinners on equal footing. God is throwing a party right now. And You can be two choices. You can be the better brother. While God is throwing a party of mercy, you're there outside, angry, self-righteous, I'm different from all the sinners. Or you can be the forgiving father running 100 meters, a 100 meter dash, embracing. Can you be like Peter? I'm sorry, can you be like Pope Francis? I'm a sinner. Say that with me, I'm a sinner. I need your mercy. Brothers and sisters, God is saying, join the party. Join the party of mercy. You've sinned against me. How many, how many of you have, how many of you sinned? How many of you did not sin yesterday? Maybe some babies will raise their hands. I sinned yesterday, my thoughts, wrong thoughts, wrong motives, y yes? We do all that every day, we're sinners. But it's so good because God says, come, come, join the party. I'm throwing a party of mercy, come. The feast is a place for everybody. I shared this story with you about a woman who came up to me and said, brother boy, I love the feast, but I have a relationship with a, with a married man tears rolling down our cheeks. I have, I have a relationship with a married man and I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't get rid of him. I, I, I can't walk out of him. I, I, I'm, I'm weak. I'm weak. I know it's wrong, but I'm weak. And, and I embraced her and I said, it's okay. Come join the feast. Just be here every Sunday. Why don't you serve? Apply as a, one of the ministries. And 
be part of our small group. We love you. I'm not here to change you, but God will change you. God will change you one day. One year and a half later, one year and a half later, she meets me again. Again, tears rolling down her cheeks, but this time with a big smile. And she said, Brother Bo, I finally did it. I walked out of that relationship and I'm free. And I, I love it. I, that's what God does. This home, this feast is a place for, for everyone. And, and you come as you are. Come as you are. With your sins, with your weaknesses, with your brokenness, with your woundedness, come as you are. Because my role is not to change you. That's God's role. My role is to love you. That's my role. And lift up your hands and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm joining the party of mercy. Thank you for embracing me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for loving me. Amen. Amen.
glad that God is a God of mercy because I really need that mercy every single day of my life. And I pray that this program was such a blessing to you. And I pray that you help me and be my partner in blessing so many other people. Hey, if you want to receive that talk, the introduction of the series, Open Wide, I, I want to send it to you for any amount that you'd like to support this ministry. Just contact us and tell us. And for a donation of 2,000 pesos or more, I will give you the entire series, Open Wide, plus my best-selling book, Heart Detox. And this book has blessed so many people and I want it to bless your life. I want to send this material over to you, ship it to your home, so that it will be a blessing to you and to your family. Once again, uh, just contact us and tell us that you need this material and that you want to help this ministry. Reach out to so many more people that need God's love. This is Bo Sanchez here in Kerygma TV. Live a fantastic life.